I actually tried to film this yesterday, but uh, it got dark and then Kona stole the show. The link in the description box down below so that you can check out all of their stuff. Oh, hi Kona. Hey, hi there. You want to steal the show, huh? But now he's asleep in the back like a cute little duck. So we're doing this again. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel and I hope you are well. So today's video is like a long overdue video. If you want to see a video about how I bullet journal, then leave a comment down below. Maybe I'll make it if y'all are interested. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm so sorry this video is so late, but I hope that this topic still interests you and that you're still interested in learning about it. And if not, well, I've got some great cool stationery to talk about and I hope that you'll stay and nerd out with me because I love stationery. And as much as I'm like an iOS developer and a lot of apps and websites have kind of replaced and displaced paper and pen stuff, at the end of the day, like that's my favorite medium. And there's something just really nice and organic and natural feeling about using pen and paper, which you just can't replace, you know? But yeah, we'll talk more about that in a bit. So today I'm gonna show you my stationery haul as well as my bullet journal spread that I've been using for like the last six months. We're gonna talk about the stationery haul first, but I will also say that this is the bullet journal spread that I have. It's actually a four page spread. So I will go over exactly how I made it and how I use it. First, let's talk about all the things that I got because man, am I excited. So all the things in this haul have actually been gifted to me by Top Drawer, who is like one of my favorite, favorite, favorite stores. They had a bunch of stores in the Bay Area when I lived there. They also have stores all over the US, but they're owned by a Japanese stationery company called Itoya. And Itoya is wonderful. They have a six story-ish stationery store in Ginza and it's just, it's Disneyland for stationery nerds. And so Top Drawer is a store in the US. They also have an online store. And so they've graciously gifted me all these things that I've actually been wanting to for a long, long time. All the products are going to be listed in the description box down below. They're all actually going to be affiliate links because I'm an affiliate of Top Drawer now, which I'm so excited. Like literally, this is a brand that I really wanted to work with. And when they reached out to me, I was like, yeah, let's do it. So I guess let's just get started. So we're first going to talk about notebooks because they sent me four and I love each of them dearly. And the first one, I feel like we just gotta talk about it. Like we have to just talk about this Midori notebook. This is the Midori notebook with A5 gridded paper. These Midori notebooks have quite a reputation because a lot of people say that this is their favorite notebook in the whole world. So all the Midori notebooks come wrapped in this like parchment paper, which just gives us this really nice like tactile, like ASMR. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? You can take it off, but I just like how it feels with it on, so I keep it on. The notebook is a lay flat design, which is, I feel like that's the kind of binding you need to go with. So you flip to any part in the notebook and it'll lay flat thanks to just how it's binded at the end right here. They have a variety of different kinds of paper that you can choose from, but I got the gridded one because I feel like that's the most like multi-use. Like you can kind of just like draw outside the lines and do whatever you want. But if you really want some structure, you also got the grid to help you do so. It also comes with this bookmark that's bound too. So if you need to flip to the page that you're on, then it's easy to do so with this. And then the pages, they're just, they're not too thin. Actually, it's got a good amount of weight to them and they're super duper smooth. And so, ah, oh, Midori notebook. I also just like, oh, I love the smell of paper. The experience of notebooks is something very special because not only does it like smell super good, it sounds really nice. And just being able to interact with something physical actually really helps me stay grounded. So yeah, that's notebook number one, the Midori notebook. Notebook number two is this one. This one is actually by the Itoya company. This is the B6 five millimeter grid. It has 80 sheets. It's actually pretty similar to the Midori notebook. It's actually a little bit smaller, but it's got a lot of pages and the pages itself are gridded and it's got that similar lay flat design like the Midori one. The design of it is so nice. I don't know if you could also see the lines on the front here so you can put your own title, as well as this little like sticker here that I'm gonna keep. The grid itself, it's kind of got, it's a little bit of a darker color and so it's easy to see and it goes all the way to the edges of the paper. This one also comes in many sizes and it's very flexible as well. The paper itself maybe has a little bit less weight than the Midori notebook, but the pages are super duper smooth. Like they're really, really smooth. So that's this notebook. The next one is kind of a fun one. This is the Aji notebook. 
So there's many notebooks in kind of the fish series of notebooks. Uh, this was actually created by one of the executives. I think he was the CEO of Vitoya. He really likes fishing and so he made like a fish notebook. And it's just so cute. The design is super adorable. There's actually also one fish on here that looks different from all the rest. And it's a pretty thin notebook. There's not that many pages on it, but it's also got that same kind of grid. And then on the inside, there's like a little recipe. This one's for aji no hiraki because the, this is, this is a mackerel, mackerel notebook. Ooh, this could honestly be like a good food journal log. That's a really good idea. I think I might actually do that. It really fits too with this kind of like horse mackerel theme. So that's the mackerel notebook. The next one is this big one. This is the Life Noble Note Ruled Notebook with 100 sheets and the size is A4. So when I need space to think, oftentimes I will use a legal pad. I don't do well in thinking on like a word processing platform because I feel like just the rules of how you're supposed to write in it and that it has to be line by line and stuff is really constraining. And I like to just kind of like write notes everywhere and just spill it out from my brain as they come out. So legal pads have always been kind of a staple in my toolbox. And because this one is so big, this is effectively going to be my new legal pad replacement. And it's so much prettier. There's so many pieces of paper on it too. In this one, the paper itself is lined. The lines are nice and wide. It's actually this kind of like cream color. The pages also have a kind of like nice weight to them too. It's also lay flat as well, just like all the other notebooks, which I feel like is a must these days. But yeah, it's really nice. It's bigger than my head. It's a nice big notebook to just think on. So yeah, those are all of the notebooks. They are gorgeous. And each of them, I'm gonna find a really good purpose for them. This one I think is actually gonna be my new main bullet journal. So I'm excited to get started. Next, we're gonna talk about pens. There's two products. One is the Stabilo pen. So I think I was actually recommended this on Instagram after I found a pen that was similar, but I wanted like more colors and I wanted more of them. And a lot of y'all recommended the Stabilo pen. Top drawer sent me this pack. There's 25 colors. Uh, it's the 0.88 fine liner in 0.4 millimeters point. I actually already have the exact same set of this and the colors I love. They're super duper vibrant. Also because the point is really small, it's really good for writing. It's really good for drawing technical things as well as just like spicing up your notes and drawing. It's a really nice design. The ink of mine haven't run out yet at all. It's just a really nice way to like level up your pen game really quickly. The next pen is the Kaweco Sport. This pen is so cute. It's pretty small. It twists off. It's like a screw off. And then you can put this at the end right here. So I've been told that it's really good for travel because for fountain pens, the ink can leak out of your backpack or your purse or whatever. And so the fact that this twists on makes sure that it won't just fall out and leak everywhere. It's a really compact size. This comes in many colors. I actually have another Kaweco pen. This is the Kaweco Perkyo. So I think of this one as kind of my entry into fountain pens. And this one, I think like I use this daily. It's like my favorite thing now. It comes with a cartridge of ink. So I have the blue in here right now, but I also was sent the Kaweco cartridges so you can refill the ink at any time and you can use this basically for forever. I think I might get more of these actually. And the last thing in this haul is this pencil case. Now Colo is one of the brands underneath Itoya, so it's exclusive to top drawer, but it's a nice gray canvas pencil case. And I've been wanting something like this for a long time. It fits quite a lot. I'm pretty sure that I could fit all of my Stabilo pens in here. And then this leather strap, it's a really nice touch to all of this. This comes in many colors and also many sizes. You can actually use them as like packing cubes because they've got square ones and bigger ones. So yeah, those are all the things in my haul. Like I mentioned, all of the products are gonna be linked in the description box down below. They're all affiliate links, so I will make a tiny commission from your purchase at no extra cost to you. But yeah, I hope you like these. I love buying so much stationery. If I could fill this room with stationery, I would, and I probably will. You should also check out the rest of Top Door's products. They have an incredible selection of things. I've bought a raincoat from them, uh, sunglasses, my bento box. I've bought a lot of different things and they're all super good quality and they're really well designed. It's actually really dangerous because when I used to like walk into a Top Door store in the Bay, I'd be like, I want everything in this store. But their online store has all the same stuff. They ship everywhere. And so definitely go check them out. All right, so now let's talk about my bullet journal. So I've been bullet journaling for about three or four years. 
And for those of you unfamiliar with bullet journaling, bullet journaling is basically a system that you use to do life, basically. I think honestly, everyone's got a different spread. Some people use it just to journal, other people use it for task management and project management, habit tracking, intention setting, reflections. It's really just like whatever you want it to be, which is kind of the beauty of it. Anyone can create any sort of system that they like that fits their needs. And that's because you're starting with basically like a blank notebook. And so you create lines and quadrants and systems for yourself for however you want to do your life. I really enjoyed it because it's a really good, easy, scrappy, quick way to be able to do all the things that I want to without necessarily like needing to build an entire productivity task management app for myself. And I change it frequently because at some points in my life, I want to journal and at some points I don't. And right now it's kind of like a mix of of task management plus journaling plus habit tracking plus intention setting so it's got a little bit of everything so without further ado let's dive in so the bullet journal layout i use is actually a four page setup and so i'm actually going to cut this part of this middle page right here so that i can see through to both sides So I've just cut this part out. It doesn't need to be perfect. Also with these lay flat journals, I actually don't want to cut it all the way to here because there's a page on the other side from the binding. So this is what I'm going to do for now. So this is kind of just scrap paper that I can leave aside. Next what I'm going to do is just make these edges look a little bit prettier with some washi tape. And I guess meanwhile while I do that, I can talk about how I started bullet journaling. So I was introduced to bullet journaling mostly through my friend Charlie Marie. She's also a YouTuber and she makes a lot of kind of design content. And so I found out about bullet journaling from her and then her friend Matt Ragland, uh, who she worked with at ConvertKit, also was kind of like a fan of bullet journals and so that's just like kind of how I started. I've been bullet journaling on and off and it's on and off because some weeks I just don't want a bullet journal. I think the thing that people get caught on a lot is that bullet journals need to be pretty. And that's true, especially because there's so many pretty bullet journaling spreads out there. And mine definitely takes a little bit of time, but I've actually found a lot of like zen in doing these bullet journals. But I also don't beat myself up about it if I don't do one one week either. So now I've cut out that part. It's like a little window. And then I also put washi tape on this so that it's a little bit cleaner. And so now let's just start with the spread. So I have these colors picked out because it's kind of like Halloween vibes up in here, but I don't really know if they're gonna go well. And so I actually use this piece of paper to test to see what color combinations I like and then see if it actually is one that I enjoy. So these are the first two pages of my usual bullet journal spread. Here I have four quadrants and these are kind of just like headlines for the week. So this one I just have a calendar to show me what week it is and also just a little calendar that I can reference throughout the week. Here I have like a little like konshu like this week theme place. This is almost like if I were to give myself fortune cookies, what would they say for this week? And what are some of the reminders and themes that I have to make sure so that throughout the week, as I'm filling this out, I can kind of check in to make sure that I'm doing these things. Next, I have the schedule. These are just important things that I just wanna have in my mind. I also have a calendar that I use with email, but here I can kind of see just here are the deadlines that I'm working with, or here are the important dates that are otherwise hard to show in a calendar. Here I have some ongoing projects. Usually I have more than one going on and so just being able to keep track of the fact that I have many going on and also maybe I'll write like a little status update of here's what I'm doing this week. It's almost kind of like sprint planning if you will of here are the things that I'm working on this week and then this breaks down in into tasks. So this is the way that I've been writing all of my tasks. I have a rolling task list style here because I used to do something where I would put tasks per day but I found that that was entirely too rigid for my workflow because because if I missed some of the tasks on Monday, then they rolled over to Tuesday. And by the end of the week, I just had all these rolled over tasks. This way I can see exactly what are the things that I need to do this week so that within the week I can give myself a little bit of wiggle room and do some of them or do none of them. It's just completely up to me and how I'm feeling that week. So here I have some of the tasks that a lot of them are kind of related to this ongoing project, but I also have other things like calling an electrician, cashing checks. This is really just like a 
jump of all of my to-do lists. They're all from different parts of my life and just having them all here, make sure that they all get done. And next to these tasks are the days of the week. And so what I do is if there's a task that I need to do on a certain day, then I'll make kind of squares like this to make sure that, hey, these are the target dates for me doing this task. When I finish a task though, usually what I'll do is I'll just look at the day that I did them. So today is Monday. And then I will kind of just cross it off like this if I was able to finish all of this in one day. If I started it, but I haven't finished, then what I'll do is I'll do a slash like this. Maybe I'll work on it on Tuesday and then I actually finish it on Wednesday, in which case then it can be done like that. And so when tasks are done, I usually put like an X right here just to make sure that when I look through everything, I know that this one is done. I definitely have tasks that roll over to the next week, in which case I use this column. And that's just for me to indicate, hey, I wasn't able to do this this week. And so I put one right there to make sure that it can go over to the next week and I can just look through this list and easily see what needs to roll over. Sometimes also tasks become not tasks in that I need to like not do them anymore or I don't have to do them anymore. So in that case, I'll just kind of put a slash like this. So this is all a very basic way to be able to track all of my tasks. And throughout the week, I'll just keep adding to this. I may or may not use everything here, but I do have space to roll over in case I want to. So that's my first page. Next, we're gonna go on to the third and fourth page. So I'm gonna write that out now. All right, so here's my third and fourth page spread. So I've always really wanted to be someone who can keep a journal and remember all of the days that I've lived, but it's really hard to fill like an entire page or even half a page. And so this is just one way that I found it to be really easy to be able to write a little bit of something just so that I can remember what I did each day. And so I have from Sunday through Saturday, it's not like a whole lot of space, but it's just enough that I can talk about what I did, how I felt, and then I can look back on things and see what I was up to. And I don't, write every single day. Sometimes I'll wait till like Thursday and then backfill some of those days. But it's really nice to just like sit down and write down all the things that I did. And so I have from Sunday through Saturday here. Up here, I've got like a little habit tracker and there's not a lot of habits that I'm trying to track just because sometimes it can get overwhelming, but these are the ones that I know that if I do them, I'll feel much better. So right now I have sleep more than eight hours a night, wake up by 7.30, exercise, drink lots of water and meditate. And so if I was able to do that the previous night, then I'll put a little dot here. And then over the week, I'll add all of these dots. And it's really satisfying to see when I'm able to complete a whole row for a habit. And lastly, for these two cells, these are parts that I fill out at the very end of the week. Here, I've got like a little gratitude section. I feel like practicing gratitude is really grounding and I always want to make sure that I'm grateful for something every week. And so again, it's not a huge space, but just writing something so that I'm always thinking about how I'm thankful is another way to keep me grounded and also helps me to stay in touch with how I'm feeling. And then in the reflection section, I talk about how my week went, how I want things to change for next week, and also just anything else that I didn't get to write in these. Like literally this is kind of just like a form of sprint planning where this is like the retrospective meeting that I have with myself. Because it's really nice just to have a place to like introspect and reflect and think about the week before. And by me writing it down every week in this reflection section, make sure that I don't forget about the lessons that I learned. So that's it. That's kind of how I set up my bullet journal. I like having this little window because then I can be kind of on either page and be able to see some of the reminders and also dates as well as the habits that I've set for myself. The beauty of the bullet journal though is that you can set it up however way you want and it can definitely evolve over time too. And so there are some weeks where all I do is just write a task list and that's it. But that's okay because that's what I need for that week and that's my bullet journal spread for the week. But when I can do it, this is one that has been working really well for me. It helps me to project manage, stay on top of things, stay grounded, remember things, and then also remember to stay healthy. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed seeing my bullet journal setup as well as my stationary haul. Conan's been back there napping all the time because maybe stationary calms him and grounds him like it does for me or it's just because the afternoon is like the sleepiest time of day for him. Let me know what you enjoyed about this video and if you have any ideas for future videos in the comments down below. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to get more videos that I make and that get published out into the world for you all that I hope that you like and watch. Thanks again to Top Drawer for sending me a bunch of stuff and make sure to check them out. All right, everyone, take care and I'll see you next time.
バイ。